You're watching News 24 Live. Welcome to this week's Super Rugby Preview Show. We are previewing round seven with Sport 24 editor Gary Lamney and Chief Rugby writer Rob Howing. Gents, good afternoon. Thanks for coming in. And I hope that you have gotten over the sore hearts and are ready to talk <laughs> about a different sporting code. Yeah, good idea. Let's move on. <laughs> Garen, I'm going to start with you. Friday fixtures. First up, we have the Hurricanes versus the Rebels, and then the Reds versus the Lions. I'm going to stop betting against the Rebels on Super Brew because they keep upsetting the Apple <laughs> Party. I think this game's a little bit more clear cut. Um, I've been really, really impressed by the Hurricanes. They've been the form team, I think, of the tournament, not only in New Zealand. Top of their conference, top of the overall standings. They looked really, really impressive. They've rested a couple of their All Blacks. I know Bowden Barrett, uh, for example, he's not starting. But they seem to have enough depth this, this year to sort of uh, fill those, those, those gaps and still look like a formidable team. I'd be very impressed surprised if they didn't beat the Rebels. Obviously now you've got the Hurricanes at home. I think they're looking for their sixth victory, I think it is, um, which will strength, um, stretch their, their lead atop the standings again. They don't look like they'll be stopped by the, the Rebels, who have been a little bit inconsistent, up and down, you know, depending on the day. It's, you know, it's, you, you've either been really impressed or disappointed if you're a, a follower of the, and a backer of the, the Rebels. So I'm gonna give this one to the, the Hurricanes fairly easily by as much as, I think, 15 points. Okay. Rob, um, the Reds, Lions, Reds having one of their worst seasons to date. Uh, the Lions, if they win, this will be their most successful tour to date. Absolutely. That would uh, have them three from four. Uh, they're just about ready to come home. So it's, it's a per perfect chance to really throw the kitchen sink one last time in Brisbane. Having said that, of course, let's not forget that for many years Brisbane has been a, a pretty much a sort of a bogey city for South African rugby in general. Yeah. Uh, you include the Springboks in that uh, mm. nine times out of ten. But... Um, uh, yes, the Lions can do it. I think John Mitchell might have mentioned uh, after last week's uh, win against the Rebels that uh, the Lions will have a puncher's chance um, mm. of beating the Reds. Um, it's however, it's also a bit close to his heart. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I don't see it happening actually. I, mm. I looked at that Reds team, and there's still there's still quite a lot of sort of fairly proven sort of uh, international players in that team. Mm. Quade Cooper's uh, come back into the mix, so he resumes his partnership at halfback with Will, Will Genia. They, they've always been pretty influential over the years, even if they're getting a bit long in the tooth, a little bit past their sort of their heyday, if you like. Yeah. But um, still give them that little vital bit of experience. You've got a guy like James O'Connor, um, he's being fielded at left wing, I think, for this particular game. He's also back after injury. Um, so uh, I think there's also the danger that a bit of fatigue might set in for the Lions. Uh, the two wins that they've eked out, praiseworthy though they've been, have been based on terrific defence and you know, lots and lots of, uh, of sort of uh, scrambling back uh, and having to make tackles and win turnovers. Um, it's been pretty, pretty exhausting for some of their key players. So uh, unfortunately, I I'm just leaning a little bit the other way. I'm leaning towards a Reds win, perhaps with the Lions banking a, a losing bonus point.